All right, today we're going to be talking about factoring. Um, now we're going to be doing stuff with factoring throughout this chapter uh, and solving with factoring, but we're going to talk about how to factor today. This should be review from Algebra 1, and we're actually going to uh, go through an Algebra 1 PowerPoint here. My first slide here is the different types of factoring that we can do. Now, the number of terms, no matter what we can do, we always want to see if there's always a greatest common factor, something that we can factor out before we get started. Factoring things out will always make our job easier in terms of doing any of them. Then after that, we're going to look at the two, three, or four and see which one we want are going to go ahead and use. Uh, two, the only one we can use is what's called difference of squares. And again, I'll give you examples of these as we go through. For three, we can have perfect square trinomials. We can have trinomials with a one in front and trinomials with an A in front. Now, a one in front are the easy ones. Uh, we can just go ahead and, and factor those pretty easily. It's the ones with the A in front that are a little more difficult. We have to turn them into actually a grouping problem. If there are four or more, we're just gonna, the only way we can do it is by grouping. So those are the different ways we can go ahead and do them. We can, you can come obviously back to this beginning part to go ahead and take a look at these. So let's start with that greatest common factor and, and review how to do that. So first, in order to do that, we need to remember how to completely factor something. We need to take 18 and either do a birthday cake or a factor tree. And 18, remember, is just two times nine. Well, we can break down nine even more into two times three. So to factor this completely, we can write it out as two times three times three. We got three X's, X, 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 and three Y's, Y, Y, Y. So that is completely in factored form with all our multiplications. We'll need that in order to go ahead and factor. So a key concept, the greatest common factor of two uh, monomials is the product of their common factors. Uh, if there are none, we consider them relatively prime. So let's take a look at one. If we want to find the greatest common factor between these two, we're looking to see what's the biggest number that multiplies into them, and also what's the most variables that they have in common. Now, most of you can probably go ahead and look at, at this and know right away that three is probably the biggest number. They have an A, one B, and no Cs, all right? But to do it the long way, just to make sure, we go ahead and we factor out 27, three times three times three times A times A times B. And we do the same thing with 15. Then we can go ahead and now that we have them all listed out, we can see what their common factors are. And so three is a common, A is a common, and B is a common, just what we said from before. So the greatest common factor is that three AB, putting that all together. If you can do it uh, mentally, that's fine. That's not a problem, but just again, this is how it comes about. All right, so what do we do with that? This is how we factor. We've got a plus in between. So we're looking for what number uh, goes into both of these and what variable goes into both of these. So we're gonna go ahead and write it out of 15 as a three times five. And a 25 is a 5 times 5, and x, x, and x. So what's in common? 5s and an x. Those come out, or 5x. And then the rest of it stays inside. We still have a 3 from the first one, so here's the 3. And we have a 5x from the second one. So the 3 and the 5x go together into the parentheses. The common uh, factor, which was 5x, stays in front. And that's how we can go ahead and factor this. Five's in common, so that comes in front. What do we have left when we take five out? We have three. What's left here? We have five. If I take an X out, there's no more X's on the first term, and there's one X left in the second term. Let's try another one just to make sure. Now we can do it with multiple as opposed to just two. Here's 12, 24, and 30. Six is the biggest one that goes into that. They all have an X, and they all have a Y. So it's going to be 6xy that we're going to pull out. But again, we can write it all out if that helps find out what's in common. The twos, we got some threes, an x, and a y. And what's left over is going to go inside the parentheses. There's three terms here, so there should be three terms in the parentheses. 
So two is left over, and then two times two times y, which is four y, and then five x y cubed. Five x y cubed, negative four, and the two. All right, factoring by grouping. This is when we have four or more. When there are four or more terms, terms with common factors can be grouped together. And then when you do that, we should have identical values left over. So let's show you what I mean. We have four terms here. So the way that we go ahead, we do what we do is we group them off. We group the first two together and the second two together. So if I take the first two, what's in common here? We have a two in common and a y in common. So that two y comes out in front. What's left over? X minus, and if there's nothing left, we have to at least put a one. So what's in common over here? 7x minus 7, we're going to take a 7 out, and we have x minus 1 again. Notice they kind of switched the order here uh, just to make things more in common. Uh, you probably could have done it differently. That's fine. Uh, these, the way that they're written, could be factored out. You could factor an x out. You could factor a negative 1 out of the back here. Either way, it would have gotten the same answer, so it's not a big deal. Now, notice the two parentheses. The two parentheses are the same. That has to happen with this uh, factoring method. Otherwise, we've done something wrong or we can't do it. Once we know that they're the same, notice what's in red. That becomes one of my parentheses, the 2y plus 7. And the other ones that are parentheses is the, is the first one. So it's x minus 1 times 2y plus 7. And that's how we do grouping. So let's try another one here. So let's take a look at these first two. A three goes out and an A can come out. In the second two, we can do a four. So three A comes out, what's left? Five and a B. If I take a four out here, it's B minus five again. Notice these are close, but not quite the same. This is the one exception. This is one that we can still do. This is backwards. And the way that we solve that is we put a negative 1 in there. And by putting the negative 1 in there, it flips this around. And now they are exactly the same. Because 5 minus b is the same thing as negative 1 times b minus 5. So that's the one exception when they're exactly opposite like that. And you got to put negative in 1 for one of them and flip it around. So I have negative 3a, b minus 5, and 4 and b minus 5. So then b minus 5 comes together in front, and negative 3a plus 4 is the other one. All right, factoring trinomials. This is where we have to multiply to get the last number and add up to be the middle number. So here's there's a 1 in front of here, so 1 times 12 is 12, and the middle number is 7. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to 12, that added to be 7. So the product is 12, the sum is 7. So we can make a chart, multiplies to 12, and what's their sum? We do this because it's easier to find the multiples of 12 than what adds up to be 7. So what multiplies to 12? Well, 1 and 12. That adds up to be 13, so that's not the combination we want. 2 and 6 is 8. 3 and 4, there's our 7. So the correct ones are 3 and 4. Those are the ones we need. And so once we do that, we can just write our answer as x plus 3 and x plus 4. Now, this is, these are the real easy ones because if you notice going back here, there is only a 1 in front of this x squared. When there's something else in front of this, we'll have to do something different, and I'll show you those in just a little bit. We'll do a couple of these here in just for just a moment. Now, this chart helps. Again, just like writing the whole factor tree out, that helps. If you don't have to do it, it's not... Uh, mandatory, but sometimes it helps just walking through 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4. All right, let's try another one. All right, so now we're multiplying to 27, but add up to be negative 12. Well, the only way we can do that is by getting negative numbers. So negative 1 and negative 27, but that adds to be negative 28. Because those still multiply to positive 27. Negative 3 and negative 9, that's our negative 12. We're done. So now we're just going to plug them in. x minus 3 and x minus 9 is our answer. 
All right, what about this one? To multiply to get a negative 18, but add up to be 3. So one's positive, one's a negative. That's the only way that this works, to get a negative in the back. So let's look at pairs. 1 and negative 18 is negative 17, not quite. And now we can do the other one, negative 1 and 18 is positive 17. Again, that's not what we're looking for. 2 and negative 9, negative 2, and, and we keep going. And we finally get 3 here, so negative 3 and 6. So we're going to write it as x minus 3 and x plus 6. If you rewrote it as x plus 6 and x minus 3, it doesn't matter. That's fine. Those are acceptable. All right, what about this one? Again, there's a 1 here. So two numbers that multiply to negative 20 that add up to be negative 1. So looking at all the factors here, you probably already know it's 4 and negative 5 there. So x plus 4 and x minus 5. All right, what happens when we have a number in front here? What do we do? Well, we're still going to do the same thing that we just got done doing, but we have to add steps at the end. So we're going to multiply the first number, which is a 5, times the last number. So the outside number is so 5 times 10 is 50. So it's the sum of 50, but adds up to be 27. So sums of 50 that add up to be 27, nope. 2 and 25 is 27, so that is the correct combination. Now, before we wrote our answer, and that was it. Unfortunately, this is where it changes. We have to go ahead and turn it into a grouping problem. And if you remember, a grouping problem has four answers. So we have to go ahead and change this and separate this middle term, this 27, into two separate terms. Well, what are those terms? That's what we just found, the 2 and the 25. So notice it's x squared plus 2x plus 25x plus 10. We just kind of took 27 and broke it apart a little bit. Now we go ahead and group it, first two, last two. What factors out of this? X does. What factors out of this? 5 does. So x comes out, 5 comes out there. Again, a checking point here is that those two are the same. If they're not, we've done something wrong. 5x plus 2 is one side, and the other one is x plus 5. So it's kind of a grouping and a uh, find the sum, you know, product and the sum. All right, trying again. 24 and 3, we got to multiply those together. So that's 72. We want to go to negative 22, so that's going to be two negative numbers. So looking for that combination that works and still trying it out. Oh, there it is, negative 4 and negative 18. Notice how they just went down in order, negative 1 times what, negative 2 times what, negative 3 times, negative 4 times, so on and so forth. All right, splitting this up, negative 4 and negative 18. Splitting it. What goes into 24 and 4? Well, 4 does, and the x. And over here, we're going to take a 3 out. Notice we took the negative 3 out. Well, why did we take a negative 3 out? That was uh, the same as what we did before. We took a negative out because we wanted to switch it around. We wanted the negative to be in back to match this first one here. So if I take a negative 3 out, I'm going to get a negative 1 here. Now I can combine that. The first one's going to be 6x minus 1. The next one's going to be 4x minus 3. Again, order doesn't matter with these two. All right, trying this one. Notice something on this. 4, 24, and 32. Those can all be factored before we get started. And if we can do that, sometimes our problems will be easier. I can factor a 4 out and rewrite it as x squared plus 6x plus 8. Now this is a lot easier to factor because it only has it doesn't have a variable in front a number in front. And so now I'm just looking for the combination that multiplies to 8 and adds adds up to be 6. Well, that's pretty easy. That's 4 and 2. So I know right away that that's just 4 and 2. Don't forget to put the 4 there from the front. But that is how we can go ahead and do that and make our life a little bit easier by factoring first. All right, let's try this one. 3 and negative 5 is negative 15. So factors of negative 15. Let's start writing them out. Negative 1. 2 doesn't go, so then 3. 4 doesn't go, and then we've already got 5 here. 
well, there's nothing that works. It is possible that nothing works, and we call that a prime polynomial. It can't go ahead and work out. All right, the last thing is when we just have two terms. This is called the difference of squares. A squared minus B squared. Two things that we can take the square root of. Notice x squared we can take the square root of, and 9 we can take the square root of. And if we do that, we can rewrite it as x plus 3 and x minus 3. Let me show you how. Here's m squared, and 64 is a perfect square. What's the square root of 64? It's just 8. So we're going to go ahead and split this up as m plus 8, m minus 8. Try another one. 16y squared. So 16 is 4. 881 is 9. So it's 4y plus 9z and 4y minus 9z. You're just taking the square root of both of these. Look at this one. This one cannot be square rooted. So what do we have to do here? We have to factor it first. Notice a 3 can go into each of them and a b can go in each. So we can take a 3b out and we're left with b squared minus 9. Now take the square root of that is b, and the square root of this is 3, so it's b plus 3, b minus 3. How about this one? 625 actually has a square root of 25. y to the fourth, the square root of that is just y squared. So I've got to write it as y squared plus 25 and y squared minus 25. And then a typical math team kind of a question, this one here, can get split up again. Notice that's still a difference of squares. This one's not, it's a plus, you can't split it. Only the difference of squares. So I can go ahead and take this other one and split it again. So y squared plus 25 and y plus five and y minus five. Kind of a little tricky problem there. So we're left with something like this. Notice these can all be divided by two, so we should probably do that first. Oh, it can be divided by 6, so let's go ahead and take all of it out. Now, it is still four terms, so how do we do four terms? We do it by grouping. So we're going to do the first two and then the second two. Now, they chose these two to go together. It doesn't really particularly matter. It would have worked out either way. You can take an x out and a 5 out, and we're left with x squared minus 4 and x plus 5. And then again, look at this x squared minus 4. That can be x plus 2 and x minus 2. So they just try to throw all of them in on this problem. But it is a, a problem that we should be able to do. And that's what I have for you today.